Iraq, for the most of the people synonym with Saddam, ISIS, war and terror. Still, there is a region of this country which is not only very safe, but also a paradise for tourists. Iraqi Kurdistan. In the previous episode we visited Erbil, we climbed the mountains in the north and we tasted some delicious traditional dishes. Today is the time to see something completely different. Next day we want to explore a bit of the spirituality of Kurdistan. The Kurdish people are part of a large number of different religions and creeds, perhaps constituting the most religiously diverse people of West Asia. Here the Muslim majority lives in a rather unbelievable harmony with Yazidis, Zoroastrians and Christians. Sometimes you have the feeling that you are not even in a Muslim country. There will be a checkpoint and after the checkpoint there was a war zone with ISIS like two years ago but now the region is completely safe and thank God ISIS was thrown back to Syria, to a little city of Syria. First stop, the Mormatai Monastery, St. Matthew's Church. St. Matthew the Hermit fled here in year 361 AD due to Byzantine Emperor Julian's persecution of Christianity. He lived in a cave until one day Prince Benham, son of King Sinarib of Assur, paid him a visit. According to a complicated legend, Matthew healed the prince, sister and afterwards also the king himself. After that, the royal family became Christians and the king built this monastery on Mount Alfaf. The saint resided here until his death and was buried here. So that's Assyrian? Assyrian alphabet. This, this is Arabic. Arabic. Mormatai is famous for its magnificent library and considerable collection of Syriac Christian manuscripts. Uh, east of uh, Mosul was the front line between 2014 and 2017. The brave British Berga, the uh, Kurdistan uh, National Army, and a lot of volunteers who joined them fought the uh, fierce ISIS, uh, whose troops were uh, on this line between those hills. And luckily, uh, in the last two years, uh, ISIS was thrown out of Kurdistan, and uh, nowadays the ISIS Caliphate is only a small region far away, uh, two, three hundred kilometers away, somewhere in Syria. Only four years ago, the Islamic State, ISIS, was next to the monastery, putting the lives of the monks in great danger. The Kurdish Peshmerga warriors, together with their allies, managed to fight ISIS back, eventually reducing the Islamic State to the little Syrian town of Bagus. Three months prior to our visit here, in March 2019, Bagus was captured by the Allies, putting an end to the Islamic State in the Middle East. Between two monasteries there is always place for some sweet sins. This is halva from Mosul. It tastes really, really good. 
This one is from here, local. I'm gonna buy this for my dad. He will love it. They call it Suzu. And in the middle, walnut. I don't think it was a good idea to come in this shop, really. So I can taste everything. Oh my god, it's a dream. This is the most famous one here. They call it Gazo. What can you tell? Wait. So I wanna buy. So that's an interesting thing, pistachio with suma, I have no idea what that is. It's a very sour pistachio. We discover traditional Kurdish sweets and the Arab tourists discover that Alexandra is very photogenic. Our flat is the everyday holiday. A spectacular road full of curves takes us to Raban Hormizd Monastery, an ancient monastery of the Chaldean Church and one of the most important religious sites in Kurdistan. Founded in approximately 640 AD, it was named after Rabban Hormizd. Fik. Oh, smokina. Full of curiosity, we are discovering inscriptions in a rare Assyrian Neo-Aramaic language. There are numerous caves surrounding the monastery, where it is said as many as 600 monks once lived. Interesting fact, the old monastery is, excepting for a few days in the year, completely empty. This gives us a unique time travel feeling. He's sick and then he's praying for him to get better until now. Christian people that are using this one, they come here, put your neck, and then you do some prayer, and then you feel much relaxed and better. They said this was his room, he was praying here the whole, the whole night. They said some people they believe that by rope, boza behind, boza behind, like he tied from here. Look. And he was praying the whole night like this. And then if he fall asleep, before he fall down and then he woke up and they continue praying. The cross here, people believe that like, this is like more like traditional here in the style of Kush. You put your hand in the middle of the cross like this and then close your eyes and then go ahead. If your hand goes in the middle of the cross, your wish is become true. And then make a wish, close your eye and then go ahead. Okay? Yeah. I'll tell you when I stop, okay? No. You have three times. <laughs> 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 First time, the second one. Beep. Yes. Or another one. You take.
shake a stone like this from here up to down if the stone stick with the wall your wish is become true The tanks are here to remember the never-ending conflict between Saddam Hussein and the Kurdish people. During his reign, the Kurds' struggle for autonomy was often resolved by the dictator by force. The worst episode was in 1988, when Saddam used chemical weapons, killing thousands of innocent people. Saddam used those tanks against Kurdish people and in 1991 Kurdish uprising start here against Saddam and we got all the tanks from him because we have our own army they call it Peshmerga and we are as strong by simple weapons like we destroy his army here and the tank is here right now is for new generation to know like how Saddam did to Kurdish people Finally, we got to the highlight of the day, Lalish, the most holy place of the Yazidis. Yazidism is a monotheistic religion and has elements of ancient Mesopotamian religions and some similarities with Christianity, Judaism and Islam. This is the temple of Yazidi people. On the top, sun, bright sun goes to the whole world, that's what they believe. And every day in the afternoon, they put fire everywhere in Lalish, 365 pieces everywhere, because they believe that uh, there are 365 holy stuffs here in Lalish. And for example, this stone here, they believe that uh, when some of these people die, the soul come to here and then from here goes to sky. They believe in one God, who created the world and gave it into the care of seven angels. The most important among these is Melek Taus, the peacock angel. The father of the Yazid religion is the 12th century sheikh Adi ibn Musafir, whose holy tomb is here in Lalish. Nowadays, there are almost 1 million Yazidis in the world, most of them living in this area. They obey to very strict rules. For example, they are forbidden to marry men or women of other religions. This curtain, they are using yeah. this one for wishes. And this guy, he sit down here, um, he make a wish, like how? They are using olive oil. Mm -hmm. And also for this, like when people came here, like, uh, leave some money, and then they ask him for wishes, like, can you do like some wishes for me, or praying for me? And then he makes it for people. A Yazidi legend states that they are directly descendants of Adam, while the rest of the world descends from Eve. Lelish is a sacred place. Shoes are forbidden at the temple and so is stepping on the threshold of a doorway. Another belief is that Lelish was the place where Noah's Ark first landed after the floods. What's this? Bread. How do you know it's bread? It's a bread. <laughs> it looks like. When some Yazidi people come to Lalish from far away, they came here, they took some bread, bring it to home, and also the holy water, the zim water, they give to the neighbors, 
and relatives and family a holy gift from Malaysia. The tree for wishes. Which kind of wish? How do you make a wish? You go here. You hug this one. If your hand goes to, to each other, see? I can't touch my finger. Your wishing is become true. Uh -huh. <laughs> more up, more up. Yes. Still has about 10 centimeters. There's <laughs> nothing bad happened to you because you're not yet easy. Don't worry. Unfortunately, due to their belief in a peacock angel, the Islamic State declared the Yazidis the worshippers of Satan and began a genocide against them. The men were tortured and killed, the women enslaved, and lots of children forced to join the ISIS army. Over 500,000 Yazidis fled the country when the Islamic State conquered the region. The most important thing is that now in Kurdistan there is finally peace. As a tourist you will find a very safe country, also due to the many military checkpoints. Kurdistan is a really safe region for uh, tourists. and There is a lot of tourists here in Kurdistan region. Before they come here actually they are nervous, but when they spend some time here they understand the situation here in Kurdistan, how safe Kurdistan is. From 2014 up to 17, yes, there was uh, ISIS, but not in Kurdistan, inside the city, in the towns, in the cities. They're only uh, out of the city in some places, but our army, strong army, Peshmerga, protect Kurdistan a lot from our enemy ISIS. Kurdistan is not that expensive. You can stay like in the couch surfing or you can stay in a really cheap hotel. Sometimes people come here, the traveler, they come here, they rent a car. Sometimes they do it by themselves. Sometimes they take a public, public transportation. But this is not like you only can go to between cities. But a lot of times they took a guide, they take you know, all of them and there's a lot of secret area, a lot of places like tourists, they don't know where it's located. People from Kurdistan, they're so friendly, they're so nice and a lot of times when they see tourists outside, they ask them for invite for dinner and lunch. It's true, Karan <laughs> is also very friendly. Thanks. <laughs> so come here, you will enjoy it yeah. for sure. <laughs>